So I went to the thrift store recently, and I picked up... There's a fox screaming outside. But anyway, I picked up two items which I would definitely consider odd wear. First off, and less, imp less important to you guys probably, is this JCPenney interactive CD-ROM that on the very dirty back that I probably should clean says it's for the holiday 2000 season. And of course, from anything from this time period, it has AOL. I mean, what good software from the days of old doesn't come with AOL? And then the more obscure thing is this golf gift set, which it's not extremely obvious, but this is a mouse shaped like a, a golf ball, half of it rather, and this is a mouse pad, and it comes with a CD-ROM that includes a screensaver. And they don't call it a mouse pad, they call it a mouse mat, which is apparently a trademarked term. But on the back, we see a little bit of specifications for the mouse. Uh, it, is an I it needs an IBM or compatible computer, or a Macintosh. Oh, not Macintosh compatible, okay. Yeah, I guess they don't have those ports. Windows 95 or above, which I highly doubt to be the case, but I can't test it with lower things. And PS2 port, easy to install, plug and play. Well, sorta, you need to turn the computer off at least. Not, not what modern times calls plug and play for sure. And a 520 DPI resolution, which makes it sound like it's an optical mouse, but I highly suspect it's a ball mouse. Which, after all, being a golf ball, would it even be appropriate to be an optical mouse? And for the screensaver, you need a Windows PC with no processor listed, um, but you just need 95 to XP or higher. And for Macintosh for the screensaver, you need a uh, a Power Mac with that specific processor, 68030, and a system 8 to 9 with thousands of colors and 32 megabytes of RAM, which I find strange that they actually bothered to code the screensaver for Mac when the mouse itself doesn't work with a Mac, not at least not in conventional means. So, and then installation instructions and technical support and all that. Well, anyway, I will carefully attempt, to the best of my ability, to both open this without severely damaging what's inside, and also not cutting myself, because blister packing can be sharp. Not to mention, this box knife can be sharp, too. be enough to open it now. Ow! That is indeed sharp. So yeah, it looks like with some initial hesitation. Okay, never mind. It was going nice and just smooth until it wasn't. Go ahead and give that another cut there. Hopefully that'll convince it. There we go. So we can see our PS2 mouse cord. Ow! And there's the lovely CD with a apparent mirror band, whatever that means. I guess this here is significantly more reflective without distorting, but I don't know why that is advertised. Anyway, we got the mouse pad too, which is surprisingly plasticky feeling. I would have expected it to be uh, like more of a rubber like most mouse pads. I mean, the back is 
de definitely rubbery feeling, but it's probably a plasticky synthetic rubber. And this is a very high quality print. Well, for the time period and how cheap it probably was made, anyway. You got copyright information on the bottom there. Don't steal it. And we've got our surprisingly thick cardboard backing, which apparently I've warped the plastic covering it in the process. Either that or it was always like that. And of course, this horrible mouse, which, for the record, is a ball mouse. I have no idea what a typical resolution for the ball mouse is, but 520 sounds like it would be average. Anyway. Close that back up. I don't know if Eagle RS is supposed to be the brand or the model of the mouse, or just golf ball, but whatever, whatever it is, it's trademarked. I don't know how well that's coming up. Yeah, there you go. And basic little specifications and serial number on the back. Uh, it says copyright handstand, so I'd assume they at least had part in making it. But you can already tell it's probably not going to be very fun to use, nor is it going to be recommended by whoever those people that run the ergonomics department of the country are. And I've moved stuff over to here. Well, the computer is already here, obviously, but the mouse and the mouse pad and the CD have migrated. So we will not boot from that CD. That's a different CD, by the way. But we will boot into Windows 95. Wow. That does not feel good on the hands. But I wasn't expecting any more. Surprisingly, the, the CRT doesn't seem to have that much flickering on the camera, so I guess I managed to get stuff just right for it to be at least not horribly annoying. Oh, you know why it took so long to boot? Someone didn't turn the router on. Because Windows 95 has this thing where, for the LAN at least, it looks for a IP address upon boot, but it will not do anything else while it does that. And if it can't find one, it just sort of freezes up. Not literally freezing, but waits until it gives up, I presume like 30 seconds or something. Anyway, I guess the first sensible thing to do is get our CD here, put that in here, take POS Ready 2009 out, which I didn't just install that on there. It's been on there for a while. Go ahead and close that. Azure Bay, or Azure Bay screensaver, it says. We'll go ahead and work our way through that. I guess I'll use the mouse just to prove that it works. And it does. It's not enjoyable, but it works. Azure Bay screen art. And oh my god, is that Comic Sans? Anyway, it says it's complete. Uh, yeah, I'll just go up. I'll just... Wow, okay. Wow, it has a tray icon. How fancy. Oh wow, that's a wallpaper changer. It didn't say anything about wallpaper changing, did it? Azure Bay, I presume. It doesn't exactly scream golf, but okay. Huh, no preview. Setting wallpaper, one moment please. Well, look at that, it has a calendar, and it... I think that's actually correct, yeah. Somehow it's still, it, it, it must just be retrieving it from the system or something, because that's a legitimate calendar. Here. I don't know how well that's, there you go, that's pretty focused. Now what's unclear to me is why 
And by the way, the sun isn't actually on the monitor. That's just a reflection. Um, it's unclear to me why it only does this. So we'll go into the settings, I guess. Um, great golf courses. Oh. Go ahead and turn that down to something more reasonable for short attention spans. Not saying I specifically have one, but I don't want this video to like last a million years. Eh, I appreciate the wallpaper, but eh, I don't really want that. Oh, geez, it, it just—it really removed the wall. <laughs> the wallpaper did it. Sound. Sound on a wallpaper. Yeah, I guess we'll turn that on, turn that on, okay. I guess 60 hertz is the best for the camera, but it's the worst for my eyes. I can see the flicker. Uh, anyway, can I get my, my wallpaper back? No, it's gone, okay. That's, that's not nice. But anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and see what this looks like now. Maybe I have to close the, okay. But anyway, yeah, you can see it has various transitions and all that, and shows the calendar, which I hope the calendar doesn't stay in the same place all the time, because it could get burnt into the screen. Anyway, it, it's sort of cool, but I sort of prefer the, uh, the flying through space one. I didn't hear any sound in the screensaver, so it's sort of weird. I don't know if maybe something's wrong. Yeah, like I said, the mouse really is not that nice to use. So I'll just show you uh, browsing the web with it. Using uh, Retrozilla, which is a very good browser choice for Windows 95. Still very limited, but it's probably better than the Opera version that runs on it. And it's still sort of in active development, it's just not updated frequently. But as you can see, the mouse works. No scroll wheel, of course, but it does work. It just feels terrible to use as opposed to... Uh, why is the cord not reaching? As opposed to the compact mouse that I usually use on this system, which I'm hoping to get a beige Dell branded one. Yes, the camera is focused more on the mouse, but that's intentional, just so you can maybe get an idea of how painful it is to use. I don't know if this thing tries to adapt to my location, but it seems to think that I'm in Ottawa, unless that's where he is, but I don't think so, because right below it it says, God bless America. Yeah, America. Anyway, you gotta scroll with the uh, scrolly bars, which I'm fine with that, but... Or you could use the arrow keys and page up and page down, but... My point is... The lack of a scroll bar just adds to the problems that this mouse causes. But yeah, my, my hand is hurting already. Uh, anyway, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you me playing this ripoff of a uh, DX ball with this mouse, which in this case I've sacrificed you being able to see the mouse for being able to see the screen. But we'll see how well I can do. I can move it fairly accurately. It's just incredibly painful to use it. I've only been using it like a couple minutes too. 
Well, that was more my stupidity. Okay, you know what? I'm done. Anyway, let's look at the other thing. Okay. I would like to not. Maybe, I, okay. Exit. But anyway, we will now unwrap the magic with the JCPenney CD. I'll put that into our optical receptacle. It claims to have both music, uh, a special title for CD-ROM users only, uh, and it it also has a catalog, I think. Holidays, gifts, music, and more, it says. And it looks like they are starting now. As you share an expression of love, that's all your own. It's all inside. Unwrap the magic. JC Penny. Let's see, uh looks like we can oh jeez. Wow, that is do I have to click that? Okay, I have to click that. Okay, we'll go to uh the gifts area and just take a look at what that has various items voice activated remote control a Casio watch interfaces with serial I like it shower CD player radio alarm clock so that way when you're in bed in the shower listening to C CDs and the radio uh, you will be alarmed when it's time to get up and then singing creatures because you know him, he, always wants those singing creatures. This doesn't have a name, but we can equip him for those nature experiences. It looks like a just a cheap little radio slash compass slash light type thing. And then we also got for her boots clothing, all that, and then, because I guess only guys are allowed to have the tech stuff. And then for kids, I'm going to guess clothing. I don't think JCPenney was so big into the toys. And they got a couple of things. Cool cam camera, track phone, prepaid cellular phone. Now that's a pretty legit thing. Anyway, Santa Registry currently exists. No, I'm not. Come on. You can do it. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. We got a games, coloring kit, screensaver, and previews. Uh, Disney Princess Fashion Boutique, I guess, is the game. I just got Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea. Oh boy, we get a... Are we allowed to do this? What, what do we do? Oh, okay. Well, it's going to be sort of a problem to play this, because my, my arrow keys are sort of broken. So, we're just going to give up on that. I'm curious as to what the screen savers might be. Got Mickey Mouse. I guess we can install that. It was installed. Okay, what's this one? That just looks like normal Dalmatians to me, but okay. Alright, those are installed. We'll look at those later. Go over to the entertaining section. Well, entertain if you don't. If you don't mouse over it, but 
otherwise it's entertaining. We can decorate, bake, or create. Tortilla spirals. Spicy pumpkin cheesecake. You know what? Maybe I'll make a Christmas special where I actually make one of these recipes. I think that would be cool. And we also got the create section, whatever that is. Uh, no bake, easy to make tree trims. And in the music section, to zoom, it's going to be music. I think it would have, like, you think they would have been able to list the... Oh, okay. I thought that was just the default names because it doesn't say anything about... It's not even a space, but it says it over to the side, so... Let's see, what do I want to play? I guess we'll go with Jingle Bells. Turn on speakers, stop it. Okay, that's enough of that. Don't want to get copyright struck. And we have the assistance section. How can we help you? I don't know. And then, of course, AOL. Everyone's favorite. A, ho a holiday treat to help you connect with your loved ones. How many million hours did it claim? 700 hours free for a month. I mean, that's a lot of hours that online, especially for the year 2000. Let's go and see how much that is. Happy Holidays from QuickTime, Macromedia, uh, Apple, and something else that you probably can pause the video and see, but I can't. So let's see. Cal we'll open the calculator. Okay, so seven. 700, we'll be generous, say that there's 31 days in that particular month. So, if my calculations are correct, you'd have to use AOL for 22 and a half hours a day to be able to take full advantage of your 700 free hours. So, yeah, I don't think anyone did. The, I guess we will look at the uh, screensavers before we wrap that up. We've got poo. Well, that's a thing, I guess. A little bit of a low effort, but probably entertain some people. Specifically children. We've got Mickey with his anti-war campaign. That no one's at least a little more involved. You got something moving on the screen, the snow. Uh, let's see, what was the other one? It wasn't gooey. Anyway, anyway, there's the Dalmatian screensaver. Anyway, I've covered stuff pretty well, so I'll be wrapping up the Oddware video here. I hope you enjoyed looking at this old software catalog and of course the mouse. And if you have any questions or comments, just feel free to leave it. But have a good not Christmas time. Because it's not Christmas. See ya.